Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Pitch Star Podcast channel. I'm your host, the HOD of the BSB, and I'm coming to you straight away after the um, end of the AC Milan versus Juventus game in Serie A, the big game that was built up um, as a sort of a title decider um, by a lot of people, me included, of course. I did that just in the, uh, in the episode, and all the, in all the episodes preceding talking about Serie A, of course, um, in that game. Um, in the end, it was Juventus proving that they are still the biggest uh, dogs in the yard in terms of the Serie A. Like, share, comment on this video what you thought of the game, subscribe to the channel, most importantly, enable notifications to receive the updates of these match recaps and all the other content on this channel. Um, follow me on Twitter, Side PSP, but just follow on Instagram, and listen to the podcast tomorrow where we're going to be going back to that game more uh, with more details, of course, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or any other platform. Um, of course, the injuries and the absences of um, AC Milan squad. Of course, the number, the big number of injuries, and add to that, Rebic and Krunic, of course, tested positive for Corona on the day um, of the game, which means that Milan entered pretty much with six to seven first teamers missing from that side. If you add uh, Gabia and Tonale. Um, with that being said, Juventus, of course, also had a couple of, of absentees in terms of both their fullbacks in Juan Cuadrado and Alex Sandro. Uh, Juventus ended with a 4-4-2, Milan entered with a normal setup of the uh, 4-2-3-1, and, you know, the the sort of modifications in that side showed, really, particularly in the midfield, um, considering that Calabria was a uh, was a central midfielder alongside Kessier, it showed how, um, how bad that choice war, was and how inapt sort of Calabria was, not in all the aspects of the pitch, but it looks, he looked co- uncomfortable playing as a central midfielder, especially defensively, considering that when Rabiot and Bedonko were pressing in that midfield part, it didn't look like he was having the best of times defending um, Samuel Castillejo and uh, uh, and um, Chalanoglu always contributing and always trying to cover ground with him. That doesn't happen usually when there's Kessier, when there's Benasso, when there's Tonali. Even when there's Grunic, it doesn't really um, happen. Um, Juventus had a, I mean, each team, to sum it up, each team had a clear target. AC Milan had the wings to run up into because they knew that the um, fullbacks of AC of Juventus, sorry, are not exactly that quality. Danilo and Frobotta. Not exactly the best pair of fullbacks that you could have. Also, um, Juventus, on the other hand, knew that they have a target in that midfield, the spaces that will be there in that midfield, because Kessier isn't exactly the strong, the, the best of defenders in terms of being a midfielder, not exactly the best in terms of positioning himself. Um, and Juventus used used the space that they had really well. The start of the game was really strong, but AC Milan created a couple of chances in the first 10 to 15 minutes. Rafael Leao had a good chance to open the scoring early on, but he missed. A couple of saves from Chesney as well, and then Juventus, of course, went forward, and they um, they took advantage again of the um, the spaces and the in those pockets really, in behind the, the midfield, specifically in front of Theo Hernandez, who didn't have the best of game. Uh, he limped out injured later on in the second half, but not before Chiesa takes full advantage of his side. Uh, in the first goal, Theo Hernandez wasn't there to cover on the uh, um, the space behind him. Uh, it was a good link-up play, great actually link-up play between him, uh, Federico Chiesa and Dybala to score the opener inside 18 minutes after, the, after Chiesa missed a big chance hitting the post just three minutes earlier and a save from um, Donnarumma almost adding a second in a matter of minutes. Um, and then, of course, scoring the first goal, brilliant link-up play, and a great right foot finish um, in the uh, corner of Gianluigi Donnarumma for a 1-0 lead for Juventus. And then after that, AC Milan sort of took the control back into the game after a bit of a, um, of a wobbly um, sort of midway through the first half. They took the lead and the control in the, um, in the later parts of the first half, scoring by Calabria, brilliant link-up play again, taking advantage of the wingers uh, and the spaces behind the fullbacks and in between the fullbacks and the lack of quality again for Juventus' fullbacks with Leao setting up um, Davide Calabria for the equaliser. The first half was pretty balanced. The draw was, I think, suitable for both sides. Um, Milan ended the second half 
strong as well, had a couple of chances for Chalnoglu and Diego Dallo in the first five to six minutes, and then I think it was a different uh, game ball. Juventus starting running up forward, again taking advantage of the um, the slow nature of the midfielders in, in, uh, in Davide Calabria and um, Kessie, with the wingers coming in to support Chalnoglu, dropping into support defensively, they knew that they had spaces in that midfield to control and Rabiot and Bintoncourt didn't disappoint. Rabiot in particular was really working hard in that midfield and in of course in the 61st minute they took advantage of that pretty much um, basic um, sort of uh, movement. Rabiot runs in, gives the ball, um, or actually Ronaldo gives the ball to Dybala, Dybala moves it across to Chiesa, links up again with the former Fiorentina man and Chiesa just beats uh, Teo Hernandez and puts a good curler into the corner 2-1 for Juventus see you later really after that it was a different game completely Milan couldn't really cope with the lack of options for them on the bench compared to the richness of options for Juventus on the bench take bringing in Arthur and bringing in Weston McKennie bringing in Kuliszewski Juventus really controlled the game for the rest of the half adding a third goal in the um, in the 74th 75th minute by Weston McKenney, who was really who's really one of the most lively players that you could have in the, in the midfield. He's really a solid option as a substitute, even as a starter. Um, he's he's the kind of player that you proper box to box comes um, into your box and and really um, adds a more attacking options for Juventus. And that's what he did in the third goal with Kulusevski and Ronaldo drop in, allowing him to come into the right space and scoring the third goal to kill the game. Dad. AC Milan couldn't do anything for the rest of the game, they couldn't cope again with Juventus' superiority, the options that they had in the bench were limited, Daily Maldini, Conte and, uh, and Kalulu, all young players and all really low quality players compared to what Juventus had. Overall, it was a disappointing loss for AC Milan. Well deserved win for Juve, again, they had a great game to show for it now, I think we only just, should just dust it off and go through. The streak, the streak of the unbeaten run has been snapped now, AC Milan should not think about that anymore and now they probably should work even harder to reclaim, um, you know, to, to and, and keep their feet on the ground by the way, because Viola came in the um, the press conference before the game and, and said stuff of we're ready to, to, you know, to beat you, they and to claim the title and that looks premature to me and it showed on the pitch when Andrea Pirlo, in the best game of the season really, he, he managed the game in, in, a, in a great Way. Yes, there were defensive mistakes, but in the, the, the you know the start was shaky. You know there was, there was some risky play from Juventus. The defensive mistakes were there to see, but in terms of game management and overall tactical um, sort of control of the game, I think Andrea Pelo did a heck of a job in neutralizing Milan's strongest points um, in this game. In particular, Akan Chalanoglu. Um, overall, again, this is going to be giving Juventus a lot of momentum. I mean, a draw would have been fine with them, but the win is certainly much, much more better in terms of the table. They're now 30 points, and they have, of course, the game in hand against Napoli, which are going to give them a lot of momentum as well if they win it. And we're considering Napoli dropped points earlier to Spezia. Um, from a winning position, from a leading position, they dropped points to Spezia, to a 10-man Spezia earlier in the day to lose, of course, and with Inter losing ground as well, um, Inter not losing ground, and dropping points against Sampdoria away from home. I, I talked about that in the review of the earlier matches in Serie A, you can check that out as well. Um, this is going to give Juventus a lot of momentum and advantage. They have Inter to face in a couple of weeks' time. So the whole Serie A race now is blown wide open and this could go really, really good for Juventus in the next couple of weeks. That's all for the game. Again, like, share, comment on the video what you think of the game, subscribe to the channel, enable notifications to receive all the updates from these match um, recaps and all the other content on this channel, including the podcast where we're going to uh, talk about Serie A tomorrow, um, the EFL Cup semi-final where Man City defeated United, and of course the Liga game that is, as I'm talking, uh, about to end between Boston and Athletic Bilbao with Boston leading 3-1. Um, follow us on social media, I'm at SarPSP on Twitter, page Simple on Instagram, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or any other platform to listen to the podcast. I'm Zaboy, the HOD of the PSP, and until the next time, goodbye.